My name is Barbara Boozer. I was born and grew up in Basel. I'm 63 years old now. I studied architecture and graduated from ETH in Zurich in 1979, almost 40 years ago. Then I went to work in Africa, where I stayed three and a half years in southern Sudan, digging water wells, and six and a half years in Tanzania, where I had to renovate the houses of all the buildings of the University of Dar es Salaam. I came back in 1991 91, sorry, with my daughter Anna and my partner Max, and started a new life period by driving the Münster Ferry over the Rhine, forth and back. And I'm still doing this. I made an MBA in business administration in order to reflect what I've been doing in Africa. And then I started to do small reconstructions and renovations again in Basel with a colleague of mine. We're still working, we are still working together in different setups. I also did um, with them, um, let's say, with experience from Africa, I did not stand anymore what Swiss people are throwing away, the way they are dealing with material resources. And I founded the Bautal Börse and Bautal Nets in Switzerland in order to prevent things from being dumped and to reutilize construction elements. From the elements, it went on to houses and to whole factories, which are treated in the same way, which I think is completely irresponsible. I created three permanent companies, so-called. The first was Denkstadt, S-I-R-L, and it's dealing with project organization and development. In 1998, I founded, together with Eric Honecker, the Baubüro Mitte to renovate the Unternehmen Mitte, the old headquarters of the Swiss Population Bank. And which it was transformed into Baubüro in situ when we changed from Mitte to another place. It's only in 2003 where we found, uh, 13, sorry, where we founded the Verein Unterdessen, which is an association uh, with the aim of stopping wasting urban space, because empty space is a waste. And we try to use it in the meantime when it's empty, so give it another use in order to keep the identity or to create a new identity, the same as uh, Philip and Matthias are do were doing at NT Ariel. Apart from these three companies, we have a few project companies which we are doing founding each time where the new project comes up and which we also can participate other people. We can have other people as a shareholders of the company and we can also retire from such companies, which is for example Unternehmen Mitte, which is Kantensprung AG for the Gundlingerfeld. I participated in Hotel Craft, uh, Verein Stellwerk, Hanro Areal, GmbH, Ackermannshof and a few cooperatives. So I would call myself a spatial entrepreneur. I don't know if this is an English uh, expression. Never mind. And the common grounds of all our companies is the public welfare. We are not working for profit. We are doing, making profit, but if we make profit, it's not for the shareholders, but it goes back into the project or into future projects. Our main goal is sustainability, is sufficiency, and we are convicted that, convinced that projects are never static, they are always dynamic and you have to adapt your way of working to this dynamics, to the dynamic process as opposed to classical statical procedures. I think when I came back from Africa, 10 years of Africa, it was quite important to compare this African way of being and the Swiss way of being. And the Swiss have one important thing they want to do things the right way. When you put up a scaffolding on a house, then it's always, yeah, we have, we have to do it right now. And 
I have adopted a different philosophy. I do not think that we have to do everything right now. We, have, we can leave things incomplete. We can leave things imperfect. We can leave things the way they are. And that is completely different from the Swiss opinion, from the Swiss way of thinking. We also work according to a Pareto rule, which says that with 20% of the energy, you can achieve 80% of a result. The rest, the 20% of perfection, you need 80% of energy, and this is too much. So we try to leave things at 80% of perfection, which are completely functional, useful, but not perfect. Of course it has, because everything wants to be planned in advance and finished. They want to complete the project, and this is completely opposite to my way of having people participate. Because when you have people participating, and this is a rule in Basel, then you cannot define everything to the last de detail, because then there is no participation possible anymore. There is no process, there is no dynamics. And that's why I'm opting for this rule and saying, no, we don't have to make everything perfect. We have to leave some leeway for the future. For me, it's for the whole society. And to the administrative level, they have problems with that because they want to deal with something and then they put it aside, this is done, and then comes the next. And I say you have to maintain everything rolling. It's a rolling planning, what we are proposing. I think Basel is a sort of a landlocked state. We are enclosed by boundaries and a lot is due to the size of the town and to this closure. We cannot expand into our natural back hinterland, back in the, in the suburbs we don't have because that's already another country. And that's a hindering growth. But it also concentrates, that's why then Roche makes a tower because we cannot expand so we have to go up in the, into the air. Another fact is that we have Klein Basel and Gross Basel. And Gross Basel 600 years ago bought Klein Basel from the bishop. And this situation still is underlying many arguments and many facts. What is also important is that Basel is very rich and we have become rich through traders, through manufacturers and also through the chemical industry. The university has been flowering, it has been very well developed since uh, hundreds of years. The Council, Church Council has been taking place in Basel. We have also a very high level of consciousness, I think, in Basel. And despite of that, the town has stayed modest. Bikes are more important than cars and we keep a high profile. Basel was able to prevent the Kaiser Augst nuclear power station, but we could not do anything against Fessenheim, and we are still very unable to do anything against, and it's only 70 kilometers from Basel, and this is for me the biggest threat for the future is that this uh, nuclear power station might have a problem, and then we have a very, very big problem as well. That's more or less, I think, some of the, of the truths which are shaping the Basel consciousness. I think the nine things which we take over from the past are the parks. We have Margareten Park, we have Wenken Park, we have Schwarz Park, we have really beautiful parks which once have been private parks and they have become public. That's something very, very nice. And they even try to do new parks like Ellen Mott but uh, it's more difficult because the old ones are so beautiful. I think a new public space needs to be covered and we try to do this with Unternehmen Mitte. It's a public space where there's no consumption uh, obligation. You can just sit there and work on your free Wi-Fi. The next one is of course Mark Tolle, which is uh, 10 times the size of Unternehmen Mitte. And also there, you can just go in, you can have a drink, you can even take your stuff and just don't leave, don't leave your <laughs> empty <laughs> bottle stuff <out> there. <laughs> so I think the new public spaces need also a covered area because of our climate, which is really not uh, 
so nice sometimes <laughs> as today. I think one of the big critical issues is the um, transport. It is a uh, discussion about new railways crossing the old lines, Herzstück and so on. Uh, the big discussion is about the aer airport. Then uh, about, for example, Central Park, which has been discussed since 10 years, to cover the railway station and make a public park. That would be a big achievement from my point of view, which now the SBB is taking up. I think we are in a really privileged uh, position here. We have been fighting for an initiative that the state should not sell any land anymore, and we won. So Basel owes 40% of the land, and I think this makes it possible that we keep our standards. Although also that, for example, these public spaces I mentioned, they belong to a foundation and not to the government, and they are not obliged to make profit. That's, I think that is one of the key positions, that uh, if you have to make profit for any shareholder outside of a project, you always have to generate income, you have to grow in order to pay interest and to pay back loans. But if this profit thing is exempted, then you have a big playground to, to do things for the common, for the social welfare, for the urban development. We have a very important uh, article in our law which says that the inhabitants have to be contacted and they have to participate in all new developments. This paragraph 55 and I think we have to play more on this. I think it helps a lot but it has not been exploited fully and it's not so easy for people, for private persons to participate because it's expected that they give their free time and all the, well, all the others are paid, of course, the government employees. And I think we have to really use these possibilities we have and then we can get a very beautiful town. In Basel we have a very nice other paragraph, apart from the 55, we have number 77, which is called um, Guarantee of the Possession, Besitzstand Garantie. When you own a building and it has a certain use, you can continue without be much interference by the by the government. So we built, for example, Gundelinger Feld. We really built on this paragraph, and I think it should be used more. And then what we want is to approach the the rules and regulations step by step. I think it's very important to have a long term plan so that you can follow up the development of participation. As I said, we cannot give to the, to the people a plan what will it be in 10 years, but we can start a way, going on one way. And then we do the, for example, the isolation, we do it step by step, project by project within a bigger framework. And I think the goal has to be more or less clear, but then how to get there has to be developed together with the people. Otherwise, you do things which are not necessary or you miss out things which would have been very important. So I think we should have this freedom of bringing, transforming an area within, let's say, a 10 years plan that you go step by step and you must have always choices to go to take. Basel has been divided into different uh, areas and each area has an association or a secretary and some are more active and others are less active. For example, Gundeli, we are very active. I am part of this association since 35 years. We are fighting for less traffic, we are fighting for more free space. We are, And one of the results is this Gundelinger Feld, which we could manage and which also belongs not to private uh, shareholders. We have a, a right of uh, construction here for 90 years and we are operating this independently on an individual basis. We also are very lucky in Basel because we are a city of foundations. So this wealth which has been um, acquired by these traders and merchants and the pharmaceutical industry has also found a way to come back into the public space and welfare and with the foundations like Christoph Merian Foundation, like GGG, 
like nowadays Habitat, Edith Mann Stiftung and so on. I think one is the harbour and it is, they work already on it. And then the problem is that Basel is so narrow. I think Basel should expand more to the, to the suburbs and include them instead of having everybody here in Basel. Basel can stay the centre of cultural events and so on, but we also have to connect with our neighbours and not uh, letting them just doing their own thing, but we have to come together. Yeah, I think we are using it as a public space and more and more and it's not only a one-time uh, Rheinschwimmen but it's every day in summer and we have little beaches even made up and we have more and more boats driving on it. I think we should not cross the town with these big oil tankers because that's dangerous and if they could do the harbour down river on the French side or on the German side, for me it doesn't matter, but don't cross the town with these big, big tankers because that's a danger for the swimmers, for the life. It's nice, but it's not, not safe. safe. Uh, I think it's really, we can also expand into winter with uh, using the Rhine and enjoying, but I think we don't have to tell the people in Basel that this is their um, Nah Erholungsgebiet, it is already used. What we are missing in Basel is uh, bigger surfaces of water and there's a project of Herzog de Mauro that this could be made downstream in France where there's big empty spaces and I think that should be worked on. I think there's too much money. We have too much money. We can afford to demolish a Hilton hotel after 40 years of using it, which is completely uh, unsustainable. And there are more such examples that uh, really money is, is just not a question and is not sane. I think it would be better many times that we have less money and then have to work more out more where to really invest it. The land should not be sold, it should not be part of the, of the economy, it should be taken off and then we can still talk about buildings and they can be owned privately and there we profit of course from this perfection and uh, of the construction industry because all the buildings which are standing up here in Basel they can last for another 100 years, 200 years. The only problem is Fessenheim or an earthquake. So, Yeah, it's getting more and more difficult because of uh, legislation. The, government they want more and more rules and for fire safety and for earthquake safety but I think and I've proved in 20 years that it's still possible and it makes sense because the reutilization of buildings keeps the identity for the people around and for their users and it allows to create great spaces. For example, this office of mine with the 12 meters high hall, we would never construct it. Nobody could pay for it, but we got it for one franc, free of charge. We only paid for the land and we got the buildings which were foreseen to be demolished. So I think we have to look very closely at each example. How does it make sense to keep it? Does it make sense to increase the the number of floors, what can we do with the, with the existing, but I, we always find a solution and I think it's better than just make tabula rasa, that's what we learned at ETH, and start afresh. Because it, to my experience it takes about 20 years until a new place starts to really live with all the interconnections and networking which is necessary. Uh, it was a market, an Angro market, where the producers came from the surroundings and sold their products to the um, hotels and the small shops. It was closed in 2004 because this trading was done over internet more and more and so the space itself was not needed anymore. The town didn't know what to do with it as well, so they allowed to make a high-rise building Besides, in order to make it interesting for investors, we tried to make a bid with, another, with a pension scheme, Abendroth, and we offered 13 millions, and the Zurich based company offered 19 millions. So they got it. They invested another, I 
I don't know, 80, 90, 90 millions and sold it with a profit to another pension scheme. And then they tried to introduce a new shopping culture in Basel with this Markthalle, which is a beautiful space and they made beautiful um, shops with the atmosphere of a duty-free shop in the airport. Nobody entered the Markthalle or they came in and went out directly. So the shops were really drying out and they stopped their contracts even with losses. That's when they came to me and asked me if we had some ideas because if we would like to expose them ideas to them and we said we would only do it if we have a chance to prove our ideas because it's not transferable. The ideas which I develop, they are always linked to participation as I said before and they are in a process, a dynamic process so that I cannot give to an investor the figures, how will it be in 10 years? I can present a vision, but I cannot prove that it's like that, but nobody can prove, by the way. So they gave us a chance, a trial phase of four years, and we started with three food stands, and we were overwhelmed with the reaction of the people, and they more and more came and wanted to eat at midday. In the evening it was empty, but our aim is to have a whole 24 by 7 hours open and we are getting nearer and nearer to that aim, to that goal. We have now Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is open in the evening as well and we serve over a thousand meals per day. And the Markthalle has a lot of events, it has concerts, it has uh, conferences, it has gatherings, it has uh, weddings, it has whatever you can imagine, all centered around the subject food. And food is really the emerging uh, subject for all over the world. So we have here the center where everything can turn around and not only for Basel, but for the three country, the three region of three countries. I think the first step is always to secure the ground because that gives you the safety that you can invest. Then it's the conviction that things have to be self-supported. We do not de want to depend on, on subsidies because you never know how long they will <laughs> keep coming. So we have to find a solid economic idea that can go through the lifetime of the project. And then we have to just open up the ground and tell people to come and to explain their ideas. And we have to listen. We have to listen very carefully. We have to invite the right people from near and from far and then listen and try to mold it into, the, into a project which is sustainable and which can last for the time which is foreseen. This can be five years, this can be ten years, this can be 90 years like here in Gundlingerfeld. That depends on the situation. And no situation is like the other. You always have to be open for different kinds of views, for different influences, for different conditions. And one of the lessons is also it's important that it's immediate. You have to have an immediate result. If you make a participation process and then you tell the people, okay, maybe in three years you hear from us, forget it. This will be other people and there will be other needs and it has to be, there must be an immediate result. We even started earlier with the Mark Tully. We wanted to start in January and people whom we had asked and whom we had contacted, they all said, why don't we start now? It's uh, in October because now it's getting cold. People will flock into the Mark Tully. And we did. We started without anything. We didn't even have brooms to sweep the floor. <laughs> so after the first day, we had to go to the shop and buy some brooms and sweep the floor ourselves.